Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. I'm ever so slightly under the weather, but don't worry folks, I'm not going to let that stop me from telling y'all all about this brand new studio album from Summerlands entitled Dream Killer. And quite frankly, even if I was crazy sick, I still wouldn't let it stop me from doing this, because honestly, I think we all need a good palate cleanser after those Psycho Sinner records. So, yeah, you're welcome in advance. This is the sophomore studio album in the first and just over six years from Summerlands, a modern heavy metal supergroup of sorts, if you will. There are a lot of talented people within this band. On lead vocals, you have Brendan Radigan from Pagan Altar and Magic Circle. On drums, you have Justin DeTors from Innumerable Forms and Dream Unending. You also have Brad Robb on bass, John Powers and Arthur Risk on guitars, all of whom are members of Eternal Champion. And that last gentleman by the name of Arthur Risk, believe it or not, you may already be pretty intimately familiar with a lot of what he's done because he's not just a great musician, he's also a great music producer and has worked behind the scenes on a slew of records from Creator, Soulfly, Municipal Waste, Cro-Mags, Integrity, Power Trip, Code Orange, Unto Others, Crypt Sermon, Two Mold, and many, 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 many more. Honestly, considering the amount of talent on display here, Summerlands probably could have gotten away with shitting into a microphone for just over half an hour, and we would have eaten it up as if it were steak, lobster, foie gras, and fine martini cocktails. Yum yum. But instead, Summerlands gifted us with Dream Killer, which I'm just gonna go ahead and say right off the bat, probably one of the best kind of classic retro heavy metal records I've heard in 2022. This is essentially a glamorous love letter to classic rock and heavy metal from the 1980s. A classic old school recipe, but with modern presentation and flourish. Slick, sexy, punchy riffs, soaring hooks, anthemic choruses, over-the-top guitar, wizardry and madness and mayhem. It's got a lot of attitude, but a decent amount of melodrama as well. Think like early to mid 80s Ozzy Osbourne meets the Scorpions with just the tiniest, littlest extra dash of Queensryche and you're kind of in the right ballpark, especially with tracks like Heavens Above and Edge of the Knife, which find a really comfortable, chocolatey, velvety, smooth, sweet spot in between classic records like The Ultimate Sin and Blackout from Ozzy and the Scorpions respectively. Somewhat similarly, you have Night Ride, which honestly wouldn't be out of place on a Def Leppard record or a Journey record from the late 80s. These tracks are by no means mind-blowingly unique or original. They play around with a lot of familiar tricks and tactics, but the execution is so good that I'm simply not really bothered. Like, these songs are really immediate, really memorable. They have a weirdly kind of immersive atmosphere and vibe as well. I love the vocals on this thing. Brendan Radigan sounds absolutely fantastic across this whole thing while we're on the topic. I would go as far as to say that he's probably one of the best heavy metal vocalists out there right now. His range is insane. His voice is so crystal clear and powerful. And honestly, despite all of the classic rock and metal worship on display, this never ever really feels derivative of any of the bands we've talked about because Summerlands do just enough to make this feel just different enough from anything that any of those bands have put out to date. The title track, Dream Killer, for instance, is a flashy, speed metal kind of proto-power metal rager with some of the biggest hooks I think I've heard on a metal record this year. I mean, this just soars over top like an eagle flying through the sky. There's also The Savior's Lie, which is a darker, gloomier, kind of slow-burning, epic doom metal style cut that honestly feels very much in the vein of Trouble. The way that synthesizers and keyboards are utilized across the record is really interesting too. It's very spacey, very dreamy, very futuristic, you know? It kind of reminds me of some spookier kind of synth pop from the very late 80s, or even something more modern like that last Author and Punisher record 
Weird or, you know, maybe something from VHS Glitch, but it also kind of reminds me of something I might hear from Asia if they were just a little bit darker. The overall aesthetic of the record, the way that it's mixed and mastered does feel significantly more modern too. I'm reminded of another kind of modern retro heavy metal band like Haunt, and to a certain extent even Unto Others, the latter of which cannot be a coincidence because the aforementioned Arthur Risk has worked with them pretty closely in the past. And all of this helps in making Dream Killer feel and taste surprisingly quite fresh. Like, it would have made sense for an album like this to have come out, like, at the very end of the 80s or even the early 90s, but it also makes perfect sense that it was released today, this week, this month. It feels like the sonic equivalent to a young chef, like, fresh out of culinary school, putting a really unique twist on a classic dish that his mom used to make for him. It's just new and different and exciting enough without being overwhelming, without risking confusing or alienating anyone, and it's also warm and inviting and endearing, but not safe. And perhaps most importantly, it's just fucking fantastic. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed every second of this. No fat, no filler, no bullshit, no bonus tracks, no intros, no outros, no interludes, no unnecessary nonsense, nothing too convoluted or insane. There are eight fucking songs on this thing, and they're all extremely well written and extremely well performed and extremely fun. Like, for realsies, folks, I love this thing. The moment it was done, I immediately turned it on again, which to me is the sign of a really great rock or metal record, especially one that plays so heavily on the strengths of classic rock and metal. So, for me, this is a 4 to 5. I think it's fucking great. This is a very enthusiastic 4 to 5 at that. I stand by my claim that this is the best kind of old-school retro heavy metal record released this year. Skullfist being a close second, don't get me wrong, Skullfist, I still love you, but goddamn, this is just so much better. If you love the idea of an extravagant smorgasbord of 80s rock and metal styles and influences and vibes, I don't see why you would not be head over heels in love with this thing. If you were a younger listener, kind of looking for a gateway into older rock and metal styles, I think this would most certainly suffice. I mean, I would still recommend you actually just go check out Ozzy Osbourne and the Scorpions and such, but, you know, maybe you don't want to listen to the stuff your dad listens to, because you're young and cool and whatever. This will do fine, you know? Four to five, I don't know what else to say at this point, it's just a great record. Go check it out. End of story. Do it. You won't regret it. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e fuck immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.